Hi, this is Lawrence from UP Energy Engineering Program, and this is a discussion on batteries as an energy technology. Together with my teammates Alvin, Sheena, and Christian, let's dive into the highlights of the long history of this energy storage. Archaeologists in 1983 discovered a collection of terracotta jars in Kuhutrabu, a village near Baghdad. The jars contained sheets of copper rolled up with an iron rod. Wilhelm Koenig, one of the German archaeologists, discussed the possibility of these jars to be galvanic cells used to electroplate gold into artifacts of the Parthian civilization between 250 BCE to 250 CE. Skipping forward to the first industrial revolution in 1786, Luigi Galvani, an Italian scientist, while examining a dead frog, brushed a metal instrument up against one of its nerves, making the frog's muscle jerk. He then suggested that there is a type of electricity stored in the components of life, calling it animal electricity. But another Italian scientist disagreed, and he was Alessandro Volta. He argued that the phenomenon was caused by two dissimilar metals and a humid conductor, and the debate was all settled with Volta's groundbreaking experiment published in 1791. He tested his argument by stacking alternating layers of zinc and copper separated by paper or cloth soaked with salt water solution. What happened in Volta's experiment is now widely known to science as oxidation and reduction. The zinc oxidizes and loses its electrons in the process, and in turn, the electrons are gained by the ions in the water in a process called reduction, producing hydrogen gas. And this is one of the fundamental concepts in battery operation. Volta took his research further by making the first wet cell battery and what is now known as a voltaic pile. In 1859, Gaston Planté of France invented a lead-acid cell, the first practical storage battery and the forerunner of the modern automobile battery. Planté's device was able to produce a remarkably large current, but it remained a laboratory curiosity for nearly two decades. Moving forward, French engineer Georges Leclanché's prototype of the zinc-manganese dioxide system paved the way for the development of the modern primary battery. The idea of employing an immobilized electrolyte was finally introduced in the late 1880s and launched the dry cell industry that continues to flourish today. And during the Second Industrial Revolution, in 1901, the American scientist Thomas Edison picked up the nickel iron cell design and created another patented version of it. Edison made use of an alkaline cell with iron as the anode and nickel oxide as the cathode. He also made use of potassium chloride as conductor, and this was primarily designed for automobile application. Since the mid-20th century, advances in construction technology and the availability of new materials have given rise to smaller, yet more powerful batteries suitable for wide array of portable equipment. Perhaps, the most notable have been the entrance of lithium batteries into the commercial market and the development of nickel-hydrogen and nickel-metal hydride cells for spacecraft, computers, and other applications. Now, let's discuss about its application as an energy storage system in the electric grid. It is popularly known as a catalyst to the growth of renewable energy, a game-changing technology, especially when synergized with renewable resources. Battery energy storage systems are modular systems that can be deployed in standard shipping containers. Lithium-ion batteries are currently the dominant storage technology for large-scale plants. In the Philippines, we only have one battery facility, which was commissioned by AES Philippines, a wholly owned company by SMC Global. It is a 10 megawatt facility located in Masinloc, Zambales, which provides ancillary services to the grid. Moreover, with the growing popularity and cost reduction of batteries, power developers have joined the bandwagon to develop batteries across the country. According to DOE, we have 2,110 megawatts worth of committed projects that will support the national grid in the next three years. Indicative capacities are part of the project pipeline which yet to complete permits and financing. Battery storage system can be charged by electricity generated from renewable energy or excess power from the grid. Intelligent battery software uses algorithms to coordinate energy production and computerized control systems are used to decide when to keep the energy or release it to the grid. Energy is released during times of peak demand, keeping costs down and electricity flowing. Battery facilities have eight main functions in the grid. First, TATCOM application helps in suppressing the voltage fluctuations by the exchange of active and reactive power. Seamless transition between grid and off-grid connection helps in supporting weak grids and improves the reliability of the overall system. In a standalone system, battery can operate and maintain stability in the absence of the grid. 
Load shifting involves storing power during periods of light loading on the system and delivering it during periods of high demand. Peak shaving is similar to load leveling, but the main purpose is reducing peak demand of the electricity consumer. Frequency regulation is used to reconcile momentary differences between generation and loads. In a spinning reserve, the energy storage system is maintained at a level of charge ready to respond to a generation or transmission outage. As a capacity firming and RAM support, it smoothens the output and controls the RAM rate to eliminate rapid voltage and power swings on the electrical grid. Battery technology during the pre-information age had a very straightforward purpose. That is, we manufacture the battery itself and we use it to operate our device. Then, we dispose it when the energy has depleted. During the information age wherein data can be collected and processed, battery systems emerged and expanded its use in the energy industry. Battery systems can now address the energy demand by complementing the generation from the intermittent renewable resources. On the environmental side, battery aids the reduction of CO2 emissions by enabling the development of RE infrastructures. On the other hand, it balances the supply by replacing the conventional energy infrastructure by developing more RE sources. And lastly, battery systems enhances the reliability and stability of the electrical grid by complementing variable generation from REs.